Hello. I want to thank Dr. Honisberg, Dr. Ducoy, and Sages for giving me this opportunity to present. This session is on navigating the long road ahead in planning for a career in surgery. My talk in the session is geared toward medical students interested in surgery. I have nothing to disclose. I'm going to go over a few points about starting out your career in surgery. First and foremost, you should look into why you are choosing surgery. Once you've decided you're going into surgery for the right reasons, you want to get exposure, as well as mentors. You should build up your CV. I'll discuss a few key points about what residency programs are looking for, and I'll finish by talking about life as a surgeon. First, you have to make sure you want to do surgery for the right reasons. If you are tuning into this talk, I bet at some point in your medical career, you have been fascinated with being in the OR and excited about the manual dexterity of doing surgery. Surgery includes close care and contact with patients, and you can see immediate improvement in patient outcomes from what you have done. Surgery is demanding, and surgeons love that zen-like atmosphere of the OR, where the task at hand requires our utmost love, focus and attention. Surgery is a team sport, where you work in collaboration and coordination with other professionals in and outside of the OR. You might like surgery because you consider yourself a doer. Rather than rounding on the floor for three hours a day, you prefer fixing the problem with your hands. No matter what people say, there is a culture to each specialty, and surgery is no different. The surgery culture is more hierarchical, more challenging, and we expect more from residents and students. Lastly, I think this is the most important and right reason to go into surgery, and that is, that you have to have a passion for surgery. It has to quote unquote tickle your brain and make you excited to get up every morning to go to the hospital. There are many wrong reasons for choosing surgery. You shouldn't go into surgery because you think you'll get rich and have a cushy job or that it's a prestigious title. Especially now with managed care, there is less money and prestige in being a surgeon. And plus, superficial ideals of money and prestige can only keep you happy for so long. Being a surgeon does mean you are the boss and commander of the OR, but being a surgeon is much more than that. It's about having the emotional intelligence to work well with staff and patients. It's about having others listen and follow without seeming overbearing, irrational, or being a micromanager. Do not choose surgery just because you've gone through all your rotations and you didn't like anything else. Surgery requires passion and commitment and it is a long road that demands a lot out of you. Now, I put you are a doer in both sections because I wanna highlight that surgery is more than just doing. It's a combination of manual skills, intellectual problem solving, and communication and interpersonal strategies. Lastly, I want to emphasize that the traditional culture of surgery is shifting. There is no more throwing of instruments, explosive tantrums toward residents, or patriarchal decision-making for patients, we are seeing more humanistic surgeons with excellent bedside manners and surgeons who value the work-life balance. If you think surgery is right for you, the next step is to get exposure. You can do this either as a one or two week elective or just spend a day shadowing a particular surgeon. Don't be afraid to ask questions about their practice, what they like and don't like about their specialty and their work-life uh, balance. The goal is to get as much information as you can about the specialty. Hopefully this will help you narrow your specialty, especially if you're interested in an integrated program like vascular surgery or cardiothoracic. Sometimes during your general surgery residency interviews, they will ask what subspecialty you might be considering. While everyone knows it is almost unrealistic for medical students to know which subspecialty of general surgery they want to eventually be in, nonetheless, sometimes people ask. And if, so just be prepared to talk about your experience in the subspecialty that you were exposed to. What is most important about getting exposure is that hopefully you will find a mentor or someone who can write you a recommendation, which I will talk a little bit more about later. It's important to find a surgeon or surgeons that you can relate to, someone you can envision yourself being in five, 10, or 20 years. Mentors can be residents, fellows, or attendings. It's nice to find people in varying stages of their career to see what their lives are like. There are different issues and questions you can ask based on their stage in their career. For instance, if you have concerns about being pregnant in residency, 
um, for a female medical student or raising students in residence, sorry, raising kids in residency for both male and female residents and med students. Ask, asking a resident their experience can be very helpful. From personal experience, I know how hard it is to openly address issues you are concerned about. For me, I was trying to find mentors and ask questions without feeling like I'm being judged or seeming like I was weak or maybe not committed to surgery. My advice to find someone um, is find someone who is genuinely interested in helping you and find the right time and place to talk about those concerns. Another point I want to make is that there are people you want to impress, like chairs of departments or program chairs or and program directors. And there are people you don't necessarily need to impress, who you can have an honest conversation regarding life as a surgeon or surgery resident. So for those people, there are no stupid questions. So don't be afraid to address your concerns. The most common and easiest way to build up your CV is to do research. It would be nice if you did research in the field that you are considering going into, but students are allowed to change their mind, so it's okay if you did your research in a different field. The important thing that residencies are looking for is what have you done with that research? Have you presented at conferences? Is your name listed in any papers? A more non-traditional way to impress residency programs is to show your uniqueness, whether that being a different subject or activity you've been involved in, or a side gig that you are intensely engaged in, such as were you an engineer before you went to med school? Were you a pro athlete? Did you do something that showed your perseverance, commitment, and grit? So what are residencies looking for? These are the four key aspects of your application that programs are interested in. And I would argue that they are listed in order of importance. First, try your absolute best to honor in your general surgery clerkship. Clearly, getting as many honors in all of your clerkship puts you at the top of the pack, but a honors in surgery means a lot more than honors in pediatrics or psychiatry, or both, for instance. You need good shelf scores. I would say programs are generally looking at your shelf score, the number of honors you get, plus if you honored in surgery, when they are trying to decide whether they want to give you an interview. Next up on the list of importance is your recommendations. In general, it is more impressive to have a recommendation from some, someone higher up on the hierarchy of intending the, uh, surgeons. So a glowing recommendation from a chair speaks more volume than from a professor which is better than getting one from an associate professor and so on. But it is super important to remember that you need someone who knows you well um, to write you a recommendation. A generic lukewarm recommendation from a chair will not mean much when compared to a stellar recommendation from an associate professor who truly knows you. Lastly, if you get an interview, that is your time to shine. Interviews are about <laughs> interviews are about gauging your personality and how you interact with others. The interviewers are looking at how you might fit in in their institution within their culture. As nerve-wracking as interviews can be, remember to stay calm and be yourself. Also, remember that interviews are not just about the programs interviewing you, but you are also interviewing the program to see if you can foresee yourself there for the next stage of your career. I want to end with talking about life as a surgeon. Yes, for sure, general surgery and other surgical subspecialty residencies are tougher than other fields. For sure, you will likely work longer hours, wake up earlier than other specialties to round on your patients, probably have more intense interactions with patients in or out of the OR, but you will also get the camaraderie of working in a close-knit close -knit, um, team. And the, and the gratification that you fixed the disease process that made a person sick. Finding that work-life work balance may be hard in residency, but once you finish residency and emerge from the other side, I can honestly say from personal experience, you are free to make your career into whatever you envision it to be. If you still want to work 80 hours a week, there are plenty of institutions that will welcome you with open arms. If you want to work reasonable hours and strike a good balance between work and life, there are places that can make that work. If you want to spend a portion of your time doing research, 
find an academic institution that will support you. For myself, I found incredible flexibility in dictating my day-to-day -day schedule, which has allowed me to be a happy surgeon, avoid burnout, and be proud of my work. So if you, are, if you know surgery is right for you, be passionate about surgery, be compassionate to your patients, find a residency that fits you, and build a career that you would love to wake up to every morning and be excited about. Thank you.